Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation video training series on the Aggregate Control Program. This series has been produced in conjunction with the Aggregate Control Program Partnership, which includes the Florida Department of Transportation, Florida Lime Rock and Aggregate Institute, and the Federal Highway Administration. The unselfish contribution of time and effort by the members of the partnering team made this video possible. In this section, we will review aggregate handling and storage procedures. After production, aggregates may be moved and stored multiple times before being incorporated into the finished roadway, bridge, slope protection, or drainage media. As the aggregates are moved and handled, they are subject to segregation, degradation, and contamination. Segregation is the separation of one size of particles from a mass of particles of different sizes, which was produced to comply with a gradation specification. Segregation is caused by movement and vibration originating from conveyor belt vibration causing smaller particles to move downward to the belt surface coarser particles being propelled farther off the end of conveyors than finer particles. Coarser particles rolling and tumbling farther down stockpiles, causing them to accumulate on the outsides and bottoms of piles. Degradation is the breakdown of aggregate into smaller particles due to impact, abrasion, or crushing. Degradation occurs upon impact with steel-sided storage bins or haul equipment. Under the wheel loads of trucks, front-end loaders, and other construction equipment. By contact with steel blades and buckets during loading and spreading. Contamination is the introduction of undesirable or unfit material into a specification aggregate. Sources of contamination are non-specification aggregates not rerouted away from an accepted stockpile, overlapping stockpiles, overloaded conveyors over silos or bins, residual aggregates on a belt being loaded with aggregates of another type, unclean bins, silos, or hoppers, holes in common silo or bin walls, leaking silo or bin gates, unclean hall units. Segregation, degradation, and contamination alter the specified properties of the aggregate and thus the properties of the construction where the aggregates are used. Segregation, degradation, and contamination occur at production sources, loadout at production sources, unloading at distribution terminals or point of use, reloading onto trucks, concrete and asphalt plants, job sites. Therefore, knowledge and practice of proper handling and storage is necessary for everyone concerned in the aggregate's chain of use. Aggregates are moved or transported by conveyors, stackers, front-end loaders, bulldozers, or motor graders, haul units which include trucks, train cars, or barges, clamshells, Conveyors or stackers are the most frequently used transportation modes at production and redistribution sources and at point of use asphalt and concrete plants. Fixed or adjustable type conveyors move aggregate between two horizontally fixed endpoints. They discharge into hoppers or bins or build conical stockpiles. Adjustable conveyors allow the vertical location of the discharge point to be changed in order to limit the vertical distance between the conveyor and the stockpile and the resulting segregation and degradation of the aggregate. 
Radial stackers allow the horizontal location of the point of discharge to be varied so that elongated stockpiles can be built which decrease the opportunity for segregation. Additionally, moving the discharge of a radial stacker to a reject stockpile prevents contamination of acceptable material. Adjustable radial or mass stackers allow both horizontal and vertical discharge locations to be changed so that elongated stockpiles can be built with minimum aggregate free fall and segregation. Overhead hopper belt conveyors provide the capability to charge multiple bins or silos from a single conveyor by varying the direction of movement of the belt and by varying the discharge location. They are typically used at truck and rail car loading locations. Although dozers, crawler loaders, and motor graders are used to move or push aggregates, the most commonly used motorized equipment is the rubber-wheeled front-end loader. The loader is used to charge elevated hoppers, feed belt conveyors, load haul units, build and maintain stockpiles remove contamination or reject material from the stockpile. Well-trained and alert loader operators are invaluable to production of consistent specification aggregate. Loader operators can aid in loading specification aggregate by remixing segregated stockpiles by loading perpendicular to the direction the stockpile is formed and by alternating bucket loads between the interior and both outside edges of the loading face. Avoiding contamination of stockpiles by keeping the loader bucket four to six inches above the stockpile base while maintaining the pile and while loading. Selectively removing contaminating or non-specification material. Avoiding contamination by keeping the loader bucket clean. Avoiding or minimizing degradation by not running the loader wheels onto the stockpile. The bodies of haul units are frequent sources of contamination. Prior to loading, the haul unit should be checked and cleaned if necessary. Convex mirrors strategically placed at scale houses or loading facilities can be used to rapidly observe haul units. Clamshell loading or unloading can result in either a very consistent specification material or an extremely segregated material. If the clamshell is gently lowered vertically into the previously placed aggregate before the bucket is opened, one of the most consistent methods of stockpiling is accomplished. If, however, the clamshell is opened above the previously placed aggregate or the material is thrown horizontally, an extremely segregated and degraded stockpile will result. Aggregates are stored in stockpiles, bins, silos. Stockpiles are described as conical when formed with a fixed or adjustable height conveyor, elongated or tent shape when formed with a radial or mast stacker, windrow when dumped from trucks or placed by a clamshell, pushed or ramped when pushed into place with a loader or dozer. Both single layer truck or clamshell form stockpiles offer good product control. Succeeding loads can be dumped against previous loads to confine and blend the material. A version of the push stockpile is a ramp stockpile which is built by a loader providing a ramp for trucks to dump successive loads on top of initial layers or solely by a loader pushing material from one storage area to another. Ramped or multiple layer stockpiles are subject to degradation from loader and truck tires. If ramp stockpiles are necessary, the aggregate may be produced slightly coarser than required or rewashed and blended in a degradation tower before use. In applications that are sensitive to the amount of minus 200 material, ramped piles should not be used. 
stockpile should be built on a properly prepared base of clean, crushed stone, which allows drainage of the stockpile and provides a working surface for loader operations. Portland cement, or asphaltic concrete pavements, have been used successfully in small, repetitive use areas, such as concrete or asphalt plants. The pavement should be graded to allow drainage out of the pile. Adequate spacing of stockpiles must be provided to prevent mixing of different aggregates. When necessary, dividing walls or partitions can provide separation. They should be constructed of sufficient height and strength to prevent overtopping or collapse. To avoid loading of improper aggregate, each stockpile must be clearly marked. At many sources, color coordination between truck tickets and stockpile signs has been successfully used. Conveyor or stacker form piles are subject to segregation through the trajectory of the aggregate off the end of the belt and the aggregates tumbling down the stockpile. The amount of segregation is influenced by the distance of fall from the conveyor, the moisture content of the aggregate, the wind conditions, and the height of the pile. Segregation can be minimized or limited by stockpiling the aggregate by size. This procedure virtually eliminates segregation both from belt trajectory and tumbling. This procedure is used in a fractionating plant. The sizes are blended at the loadout point to produce the desired grade. Limiting the free fall distance from the belt to the top of the pile to less than 15 feet. Adjustable stackers can be used to accomplish this. Keeping stockpiles low. If loadout is done with a front end loader, the pile should be no higher than the extended loader bucket. This allows the loader operator to load each bucket from the full depth of the pile. Using elongated piles where possible. Radial or mass type stackers may be moved horizontally to reduce the opportunity for segregation. Providing a properly positioned paddle wheel to interrupt the trajectory and to deflect the aggregate vertically into the pile. A properly positioned paddle wheel turns in the direction opposite to that of the conveyor. Using tunnel recovery systems beneath the stockpiles. After initial drawdown, a live zone is formed which confines the material. Stockpiling rules are less critical for fine materials such as sand and screenings, which do not have a great tendency to segregate. During loadout, an observant and trained front-end loader operator can aid in producing specification aggregate from a segregated stockpile. As shown in this scene, the operator will enter the pile perpendicular to the direction that the material is deposited onto the pile. This allows a cross-section of the pile to be accessed. During the progress of loading, the operator will selectively alternate loads from the loading face to re-blend visually segregated material. The operator will avoid contamination and or return it to be recycled. Basic rules to follow in stockpiling include handle the product as little as possible in order to limit the opportunity for segregation, degradation, and contamination. Do not let piles get old. Always ship the oldest material first. Old piles are subject to erosion and contamination. Deplete existing and form new stockpiles. Do not replenish old piles. Understand that maintaining a tunnel recovery system is not replenishing an old pile. Keep stockpiles clean by maintaining areas around piles and equipment. Do not contaminate piles with unacceptable product. Provide controls for rejection of unsuitable material from the processing plant. Protect stockpiles from erosion and wind-blown dust. Bin or silo storage provides excellent protection against segregation, 
degradation, and contamination if a few simple procedures are heated and followed. Keep bins and silos as full as possible to limit free fall and therefore segregation and degradation. Completely discharge the overhead conveyor belt before loading a different size stone into another bin. Do not overload the overhead conveyor so that spillage occurs which contaminates other material. Completely discharge or clean bins before refilling with a different aggregate. Do not allow holes in common walls so that leakage can occur into adjacent bins. Contamination of acceptable aggregate can be the result of screen override, spillage, oil and grease from mechanical equipment, trash, dirty haul units. Processing equipment must be provided with a means of scalping or rerouting contaminants. Radial stackers are an excellent method of rerouting contaminants. The stacker can easily be moved to a reject stockpile located at the active end of the stacker travel to avoid spraying the acceptable material. Contamination can be prevented by training and supervision of plant personnel. Alert visual quality control. Good equipment maintenance. Good design and maintenance of stockpile areas and service roads. Keeping equipment off stockpiles except when absolutely necessary. The use of good handling and storage procedures is essential to production of quality specification aggregates for use in Florida's transportation system. Everyone in the chain of use is a stakeholder and can be a contributor.